The MMA Discussion Podcast, episode number eight, I think. It's been a while, Blaze, and I'm here with uh, Blaze. You know me as Nick, our two admins. What's going on, Blaze? How's it going, buddy? How's it going, guys? Oh, it's been a while. Why yeah, is that? It's been, a, it's been a little bit. Yeah, it's been like at least two weeks, I believe. It's good to have this podcast going. I know some of you have been asking for it, and here it is. We're finally back, and a lot, has gone, a lot of shit's gone down in the last two weeks, so it'd be hard to catch up. Which is why we have some people asking us some questions over the last two weeks, which we will answer. First off, we're going to start this podcast by recapping Bellator's inaugural pay-per-view this past Saturday, Bellator 120, which we were surprised that they went along with still making it a pay-per-view, but at this point, they were only a week off. Why would you say no at that point, you know? Yeah, I had no choice. I mean... I mean, they could have canceled it essentially, but it would have. I mean, they're not a big organization like the UFC, whereas like when they canceled the Jones Henderson card, they could come back from that. But Bellator canceling a big card like that, that would have really, really uh, screwed. Over. Yeah, I mean, when essentially when you come, when it comes down to also is that they uh, they invested so much in uh, into you know pro- promoting it and already paying you know the the, the venue and and the TV, the people that you know you know. Uh, uh, the stations that put it on pay-per-view and show it, uh, all that money, I'm sure, had already been poured into this, this, uh, this first try. And so, I, that that for for fans wondering why they never switched it to back to Spike, that's probably a big reason why. Plus, they must have felt comfortable keeping uh, Rampage Jackson and King Mo as the as the main event, as well as having Michael Chandler, their middleweight champ, uh, Schmanko and Tito Ortiz on the card. There are names on that main card, and then um, and then some. So I thought it was a, an overall good card myself. We'll review it right now. First of all, what did you think of the card as a whole? Card as a whole um, was pretty good. Didn't see much of the preliminary card. I didn't do anything for the check uh, fight and the pay per view. I mean, I thought it was a soft card, no different than a UFC pay per view. Uh, to be honest, it was eerily similar to like a UFC pay per view, the way that just everything was in the production. A little bit strange. The fights as a whole was great, in my opinion. Yeah, I thought they were good too. Um, my, I, I, I only, I only watched the Czech Congo fight, and he finished it. Uh, I think in the round, second round, or so. Um, but uh, as as far as uh, uh, the the pay per view part, which is what everybody's asking towards, I mean. Uh, I can't exactly put my finger on where that card may have done as far as pay-per-view buys, um, but grading it, I would say it was maybe a B, strictly yeah. because it had a lot of things in there. The It had the shock factor, that being the Tito Ortiz-Schmanko fight. It had a controversy, which you know um, you would go to the main event for because uh, the, the decision on that fight was somewhat controversial. And then you have... Um, uh, uh, also, I felt the Will Brooks Ch- uh, Chandler fight was was decent and exciting in its own right. So it had a lot of yeah, had a lot of it had its it had its moments as far as the pay per view main card itself. It had its moments. The the prelim uh, it was smart for them to top it off with Czech Congo fighting. Uh, I think it was Eric Smith or whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. I think that was him. And um, and even starting up to this fight, Jackson and, and Mo were promoting it very. Well, I felt a lot of people feel that that beef is maybe kind of planned or however you want to word it, but uh, I don't I don't see it that way to me, honestly. Especially when a guy does something that gets him fined ten thousand dollars. If anybody doesn't know, at the weigh-ins, he shoved King, uh, King Mo after, uh, right after weighing in. That cost him uh, in the eyes of the Mrs. Mrs. Uh, what state were they in? Uh, they were in. Uh... Tennessee, Tennessee, correct? Yeah, so the Tennessee Sport, uh, Sports Athletic Commission decided to fine him for that, which is surprising because, you know, we've seen worse out in a, in a, at a weigh-in before. So, <laughs> if anybody, my, one of the most, like, um, memorable ones to me is when Vanderlei shoved Rampage and when Anderson Silva uh, shoulder-jabbed Chael in the face in Vegas. And I don't think a single thing was done for those two guys, so... But you never know. I mean, as, uh, first off, let's talk about the the, the Tito fight. I had like 10, 15 people over at my place to watch the card, and 
a few of my buddies are huge Steelers fans, and so am I. And I was saying the whole night, I want Tito to win some that, but I was like, realistically, Flamenco's going to steamroll him. I mean, I'm, I, I've seen Flamenco fight quite a bit. He's a powerhouse. He's a young guy. He brings it. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, man, out of nowhere, you know, Tito gets the takedown. I see him like, is he working for that arm triangle? And my buddy's like, no, he's not going to get it. And he locked it in. You know, I screamed like a little girl when, when uh, Flamenco <laughs> was out. I know that sounds really horrible, but... And, and then just, you know, see him do the grave digger in the middle of the cage again, man. It's just... I know it's against the smaller guy, and everyone's being so critical about that, but I mean, either way, it was a top-level top competitor. He won in the first round. He finished the fight. And this is after, I mean, I know he says it so much, but he has had so many surgeries, and he has come back from a lot of shit. So I mean, it's good to see the guy get a win in that kind of fashion. So I was, I was pretty stoked, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I've been a I've been a uh, um, Tito Ortiz Tito Ortiz fan too. I did also think that Schmenko was gonna was gonna steamroll him, and I give no excuses to Tito. He got the win, good for him. I don't say because he was smart, I never made any excuses for him. I was happy to see him win. Um, I also would have been happy seeing Schmenko win. I've become a fan of the guy over the last uh, year and a half because of, of of how good that guy really is in there, and, and even when. He's in close fights. That dude brings it. Even in the last minute, he'll still come forward. He'll still try and win, and and it's won him fights. You know, um, as the, one of the best examples of that is his fight with Cooper last year. That really, to me, I thought was one of the best fights of the year, especially. Um, yep. So I mean, it, that, one of the things also to take from it is man. The kind one thing I feel it does in a like from a almost like a political standpoint is like man you you just put your middleweight champion up against a, a a light heavyweight and even though and everybody expects him to win and now he doesn't win and now people look at Schmenko like you know is he that good or is he not that good and it might also bring a lot of people to criticize the middleweight division as a whole as what I've seen from our page and other pages as well what do you think about that uh It's hard to say. I mean, I know. I know. One of those. You stumped me a little bit with that one, buddy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a hard thing because it's one of the things that I've realized as as a. Um as the as a couple of days went by, and I didn't even watch the fights live. I was at work. I watched it when I got home. Um, and watching, yeah, I was shocked, and that and that was just one of the first things that hit my head because a lot of people were criticizing Tito, and I was like, great. Well, if they're gonna criticize Tito, they might also just start at criticizing Shemenko, a guy who fought, who took, you know, took up the challenge of trying a guy that size, and and and, every, and everybody backed him up on it, and now that it isn't, people are gonna now criticize him for making that challenge, for fighting at 205, and for losing in a fight that they all felt he should have won. So. It, it kind of hurts Bellator in that sense, but I but I think in the long run people will forget about it, especially if Tito gets back in there and wins another fight and just starts looking like Rampage is looking where he's coming back and winning these fights. You never know. Um, what do you think? Let's talk about that too. Is what do you think Tito Ortiz goes from here? What, what fight do you think makes sense for him on the Bellator uh, yeah, roster? Yeah, that's the interesting because I was reading an interview today with Antonio McKee, uh, who is Rampage's coach and um, Emmanuel Newton's coach, who's the Bellator light heavyweight champ now. Um, and he was saying how he doesn't want those two to fight because, you know, he's obviously both their coaches. It's kind of a lose-lose for him no matter what. Um, but uh, Newton wants to want, said he would fight. Rampage said he would rather not. The, what McKee said, he said, why not have King Mo and Rampage go at it again since Rampage wants to knock him out and shut him up? And then he said, why not have Tito go up against Newton? I mean, I, I don't believe that Tito, you, you know, deserves a title shot in any organization at this point. I don't. But I feel, <laughs> yeah, I see the look you're giving me. They're not going to see that. But um, I don't feel like he deserves it. But I feel like knowing how Bellator does their business, how they used to be, you know, oh, you have to earn a title shot. That went out the window. Like, it, it was out the window a long time ago. So this is not what I not what I want to happen, but I feel like what's going to happen is King Mo versus Rampage two, and I feel like they're going to give Ortiz a title shot, and watch Tito beat uh, Newton, and watch Rampage beat Mo again. And they're going to set up Tito versus Rampage for the title. Oh my God, two legends with the big comeback. They're fighting for a belt. You know, blah blah blah. Shut uh, up. That's what's going to happen. I guarantee you. You guarantee that that's going to happen. Wow, that's a ball. That's, 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 that's a ballsy ass prediction. 
who else are they going to put Tito up against? They're going to they're not going to put up against King Mo because Bellator knows that King Mo is going to take Tito down and lie on him. I mean, what's going? What are they going to do with Tito? What do you think they're going to do with Tito? I don't know. I haven't given it much thought, honestly. I figured they put him in the. I pick. I figured they put him in the next tournament. Eh, well. Honestly, I mean, let's look. I mean, it sucks when we that do this. Suck. And well, Tito's gonna lose to one. Like, I mean, it, he's gonna have to be what two, three people. There's a good chance that he's gonna he's gonna fight two or three really young, talented guys. Very a better chance than not of him getting his ass kicked by one of those people. <laughs> Well, hey, I'm sure those fighters wouldn't complain getting the chance to fight him. I know, but um, more more or less, it, 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 Tito hasn't really given us any opinion on what he should do next. He just claims that he can beat any 205er in Bellator's roster. He uh, reposted the interview with Antonio Keys and then signed it. So he wants the Newton fight. Of course he does. Well, who, who wouldn't want a title <laughs> fight? He already beat the middleweight champion. Why but not go after the? I don't think he wants in the tournament. What's in it for Tito to fight these? I mean, what? I mean, if he loses, oh look, he fought to these young no-name fighters. If, if he if he wins, oh look, he beat these no-names that we don't know. Eh? Either way, him going in a tournament in Bellator doesn't make any sense for Bellator or for Tito as a person. Yeah, that's true. That's hard. That's a really hard one because it's to put your. I mean, from a business sense, like what you just said could happen, and if it did happen for Bellator, it's a fucking goldmine. Especially if you put those cards like on the same card, then you have another pay per view to go off of, you know. Um, so, for, but a lot has to happen for that to happen. Um, especially because uh, you, you look at you look at where Tito's at, and a lot of fans are skeptical. It, it, it definitely brings to light how Bellator gets perceived, especially if say Tito gets his ass handed to him by Newton. Um, I don't know. I I honestly wouldn't be, you know, not okay. I w I would definitely like it if he did the, the light heavyweight tournament and actually earned a shot. Because if he did that, then uh then man, you have I think a lot of people more people would watch. It's definitely a risk because you risk Tito obviously going into a tournament and losing. But they made that same risk with Rampage and King Mo and and putting them into a tournament and it paid off anyway. They were able to get that fight. They tried doing that fight before even. Um, Oh, actually, no, that's not true. Never mind. I thought they had put a Rampage in a tournament before, but no, he hadn't been. No, they, um, yeah, King Mo was in a tournament and he lost to Newton, Newton twice. Newton, yeah. <laughs> Newton has his <laughs> number, man. He does, yes. One by knockout, one by decision. That's right. Newton, mean, he, like, Newton is like the black Randy Couture, man. What's up with this guy? It's insane. The, like, he's a fight. He's what, like 43 now or something? Is he? He's, he's getting up there. I mean, I thought he looks like it. I, I do not know that about him. If he's that old, then I don't know. I mean, look that up. But um, all I all I know is his knockout over King Mo was fucking hilarious. When like King Mo like landed like rocking in his arms. Yeah. That was the best thing ever. <laughs> Turned into a baby thrown in the air, and he just had to catch him. Oh. I mean, did you see that video that someone made and posted on YouTube? Oh the slope? yes, it was, it's it's it's. Will always love you. <laughs> that's like our admins. JP and Zach love the fuck out of that thing. And it's just, <laughs> for for the <laughs> yeah, and it does. It just makes you giggle just thinking about it. It's funny because <laughs> like the, the the big drum beat is like at the same time that he gets back fisted to the face. It's just it just works so well. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting all excited over here about a YouTube video. This yeah, is rough. <laughs> that's funny, man. But I mean, like for me, as I said, I wouldn't be opposed to Tito being in the tournament, and I also wouldn't be opposed to a rematch because that fight. If we're just going to skip the co-main real quick, we'll get to it. But going to the main event, I honestly f watched it twice and gave it to King Mo just barely. Just barely. I mean, it could have. I would have been more okay with a draw, honestly. Because um, it just came down to that third round. And that third round, you look at it and you're watching it and you're going, oh, okay, well, you know, he's like, King Mo looked like he was going to take it because he was wrestling him throughout the, throughout the majority of that round. The majority of it. And then Rampage comes back, pushes forward, tries to attack. Uh, arguably does more damage because um, he landed some shots. And King Mo, while he was controlling the, uh, you know, controlling him uh, for the for the majority of that third round, didn't do much damage as opposed to when Rampage got up and did some damage, just not for a lengthy period of time because he didn't have that much time to work with when he got back up. And um, and so it's definite. It was definitely a very close fight. I felt it was a 
very controversial fight and controversial ending just because of the fact that I scored it for Lo for Mo Lawal. But it's not like um, a, a huge robbery, especially when, you know, it was that close. It was really close, I felt. It came down in the third round. I mean, if it was like, you know, Lawal got like two clear rounds and he still lost, that's a robbery. But that's not what happened. It's just a very controversial decision because some uh, like half people agree, half people don't. That's a controversy. A robbery is something much different. I don't think that's what we were, what we watched. Um, uh, another close fight that happened on that card was Michael Chandler versus Will Brooks, who got the amazing upset in getting that split decision win. Um, good for that dude. Honestly, I've I had only watched him fight like once prior to that to that and hearing that he was the guy getting the, the, the pay-per-view shot and co and the title fight and all that jazz. I was like, damn, you know, big moment. And then he wins. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> Bellator is happy about that. I mean, I, I, I don't, who knows how they felt about it, but I just feel like that, that they probably felt, oh, shit, now we can't make the Alvarez fight. And now B Bjorn Rebne, Rebne, how the fuck you say his name? Bjorn Rebne is, is being... Uh, is being kind of uh, what's the word callous about how he feels that this should go now. He's saying Alvarez can ask for the third fight, and he or he could just fight with Will Brooks and this, that, and the other. And honestly, if you're Alvarez, and now the and now the the, the sweetness to that third fight with Chandler is now kind of just you know sizzled down at this point, because uh, if he had that third, if he really just took that third match with Alvarez uh, or or uh, Chandler. Um, then it it, it, it it doesn't have that that appeasing factor that it, it had prior to to this event. So what Bellator does from there, I, I honestly have no idea. If I was Eddie Alvarez, I'd just say, hey, I'm just down to vacate the belt and jump ship. But I don't think you can because we're talking about Bellator. <laughs> so yeah. who knows, you know? What do you think no, happens it's, here? It's true, but I mean, now that the fact that Will Brooks has come out as like another one of those top guys now. I feel like Bellator can afford to lose Alvarez. I mean, I still don't think they're going to just, you know, be like, hey, here you go, rip up your contract, you can go. But, I mean, I feel like, you know, it'd be the right thing for them to do for once. I was a big fan of that fight, though. I mean, that was a good fight. He, he surprised the hell out of me. Oh, yes, he, definitely. Chandler, I mean, before this fight, um, Brooks, his biggest win was against, like, John Alessio, man, and, like, that guy... He's just a journeyman. He doesn't have any really big wins. He's just like a guy who's fought in the UFC a few times. But besides that, nothing special. He's so, a guy that fought in the UFC like six times and didn't win any of them. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I know John Alessio. I had to study that dude up at one Canadian, point. Trust me, I, I know him. <laughs> Canadian. We'll see, that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I just didn't give him a chance. Maybe that's just ignorance on my part. But I mean, I knew the guy had like a four or five fight winning streak, but I was like... This is Michael Chandler. I mean, maybe maybe Bellator's hype team working out for me, but I mean, he has got you know a win over uh, Alvarez. I thought he won the second fight too. To be completely honest with you, I mean, in some rankings he was as high as number five. He was mostly top ten in everyone's rankings. I mean, it's just a big shock for someone who wasn't even probably considered top twenty five to come in there and just not not steamroll or not dominate. It was a close fight, but you know, be that competitive and get the decision. It yeah. shocked me, and it's good though. It mixes things up. I wish that happened in the UFC more often. You know, young up and comers getting the shots and just shocking the world. It's it was good to see. It was cool. Yeah, we you only rarely ever get moments like that in sports yeah. where you know a team is so dominant, and, or a fighter can be so dominant, especially in combat sports where somebody's so dominant, and it rarely ever happens. But it's good that it rarely ever happens. It makes it it makes that moment that much more exciting and awe inspiring and all that. And so um. I was definitely surprised by Will just throughout the fight because, yeah, it's Michael Chandler. That dude is controlling, knocking dudes out left, uh, controlling guys, knocking dudes left and right out, put, putting it to, to some of the better fighters in the world. Um, and then here comes this unsuspecting uh, dude who just comes in and, and, and gets it done uh, against Michael Chandler. And I was I was definitely surprised. So I would think, you know, they, Bellator can treat this one of two ways. They can be a dick about it and be like, oh, well, we need to promote Chandler, Chandler this, Chandler that, because of the fact that he was once that guy that came up and shocked the world when he beat Eddie, Eddie Alvarez three years ago, you know? So yeah. now Will Brooks is the guy that comes in, shocks him, beats him. You know, Bellator is showing that they can make stars. They are. I think that was, that was probably one of the best... Best proofs of it, 
which nobody can really see. Chandler, three years ago, shocked the world when he beat Eddie Alvarez because nobody gave him a chance. And then he did it, and he beat him, and he won the belt, and he became a star. Now Will Brooks comes in, uh, just short notice, made the weight fine, came in, made a competitive fight, and shocked Ch Chandler. And that just shows you how far Bellator's come along in a short amount of time as far as with their stars. To have a guy like Michael Chandler, a guy you've built up and who's shown that he's a badass dude, go in there yeah. and then he gets beat up by an up-and-comer. So it's showing that Bellator can make some stars. Uh, and, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's good. And what they should do is, you know, start getting behind Will Brooks. Start getting, you know, just get behind him the way they got behind Michael Chandler. Um, yeah. I think it'll just benefit the uh, uh, Bellator more. It'll make it, you know, it, it already sheds even more light on the fact that their lightweight division is one of the more competitive ones out there in the world. Um, yep. Definitely more so than the World Series of Fighting, I feel. Uh, I feel like the World Series of Fighting has a better welterweight division, but, uh, yeah, Bellator's showing for sure that they have a better uh, lightweight division amongst any yep. other uh, so you're promotions. Say, you're saying World Series has a better uh, welterweight division than Bellator does? Yes. Okay, especially yeah, I mean, considering, yeah, especially considering the fact that they lost Ben Askren, um, and, uh, and they lost uh, two other guys. But I mean, I guess they kind of fell off. Such as, because uh, I mean, you look at them. They got guys like Rick Hahn, who I would say is probably one of their better ones. They got uh, Lima, who's the now the champion. Who is who is a absolute beast? To be honest, I, I feel like if he was in the UFC, he'd be, he would be top ten, borderline top five. That guy is talking about Lima. Yeah, him and yeah. his brother Diego are like his brother Diego's on the Ultimate Fire. They're both killers, man. Oh yes, very. And and I agree with that. I'm just saying I think the welterweight division in World Series of Fighting is better. I mean, you look at the competition, the talent on there, and they put on exciting fights every now and again. You got Husamar Palhares, John Fitch. Now they've added Jake Shields, Steve Carl, who's actually a, a very you know game opponent for anybody. There was a reason he was holding that belt before Husamar fought him. Um, you know that division is pretty strong. Um, so, I mean, it's, 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 what I love about this whole conversation altogether is we're talking about another promotion. It's nice to actually talk about another promotion. When recently, Bellator hasn't given us much reason to get behind them too much. Now I feel like they are, and it's because of their stars, and that's why, you know, we all like to get, you know, that, that's kind of why we give Bellator some heat, is we don't, sometimes they do things that make it seem like they don't treat their fighters well. You know? Sometimes, just, yeah, just sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But their fighters are some of the best in the world. Matter of fact, my favorite featherweight in the world fights for Bellator, Pat Curran. And, um, and so, you know, I just want to see them get treated better. And I want them, I want to see them get behind these guys that can do great things. Will Brooks did that, and I feel they need to get behind that guy. Yeah, and just because you mentioned Pat, Adam is somewhere smiling, like, obnoxiously oh, right now. I know. It's all right. <laughs> He's got a phone. I know. Pat Curran is a beast. That, that comeback winning against Strauss was. Oh, ridiculous, man. Yeah, I mean, Bellator puts on moments. Their fighters put on some of the best moments that you could see in MMA. I mean, if Bellator was on the level of the UFC, uh, some of those moments would be a lot more rec recognized and, and, and high on the minds of so many uh, fans. because, But not as many people watch it as they do the UFC. And, and I got to say that Bellator does put on great moments. So one of the better ones that I remember is, is altogether watching the career of Chandler also has been something, now that I think of it, something great to watch, especially because of the fact that guys, you know, um, defended that belt a few times, beat guys like Akihiro Gono and, and, and those, the fights with Chandler and watching Alvarez, uh, you know, grow up there. Uh, um, altogether, Bellator has had, numerous types of of, uh, of historic moments happen for their promotion that, you know, if they could just, they just, there's just something about them that they really need to, like, just pass through this threshold because of the fact that they're number two, but there's just something about that, and I can't put my finger on it, and, and I, obviously they can't either because they haven't been able to do it to where they could just pass the threshold of where they're at as to being number two and being able to show the world how great their fighters really are. And that's not up to the fighters. The fighters are getting it done. They're going in there and they're making great fights and putting on great moments out there in the cage. It's just a matter of the promotion itself. Which and, is and the promotion is what's lacking severely. I read something online today. I don't know how accurate it is, but they were saying the estimated buys were 50,000. I mean, oh, the work 
the, harsh. the worst UFC pay-per-views get, oh. like 150 at the very worst. They barely ever dip below 200,000. So, I mean, and that was, I mean, arguably their biggest card ever with two of the biggest names in MMA history. Um, some good up-and-comers. Um, Bellator's biggest, like Chandler's one of their biggest stars, too. I mean, the, the Chilenko's one of their biggest stars as well. The fact that they had all that star power and all that, all those good players on that card, and they still, if that's correct, only 50,000 buys, it, it just shows that, Realistically, in the in the mixed martial arts world, no matter how many big names you have, no matter you know, no matter how many um, good fighters you have, without that name UFC there, without that that structured and and built um, fan base, it's really really hard to really do something big. Yeah, man, uh, man, I didn't I didn't hear about that fifty thousand, but that was around my guesstimation of where they get at. But after watching the card, it kind of hurts to hear that because it was a good card. Um, <laughs> works i mean the, the prelims I, I saw the prelims got an average viewing of like seven hundred and fifty thousand, which is even worse which means like seven hundred thousand people that watch the prelims just were like okay fuck it i'm either gonna go to sleep or stream it <laughs> yeah and oh, man that's a harsh hit and it just sucks because yeah the ufc or i mean bellator has you know, great fighters, they really do. And it, and and watching this pay-per-view makes me realize that. Will Brooks honestly made me realize that. And one thing I'll say to you uh to to the to the fans that are listening listening on our podcast, what I want to do now more often is, you know, be able to to report on these fights and and bring them to the page because we used to, but we just weren't getting enough attention, but I'm going to try and force the issue here. I want Bellator's fighters to do good as far as Bellator itself and their their kind of whatever it is their jurisdiction whatever you want to call it the way they do things sometimes they don't do it correctly I don't like Bjorn Rebney uh, honestly I, I think the guy does play favorites I agree with King Mo Malal when he says that the guy is playing favorites I feel like he does that he does that in interviews he never promoted King Mo too much for this fight and I noticed it and um and uh, I, I don't like how they've treated certain fighters. I don't like that they gave issue to Paul Daly, that they gave issue to Eddie Alvarez. I don't like that they did all that nasty shit to him. And uh, and, and even now, even if he wanted to leave, he probably can't. They give him more shit. And that's just what I hate about Bellator, and it's why it makes me not want to watch him. But when you watch their fighters, you so badly want to watch these guys because they are yeah. that good. It's it's one of those those things, like... I, I want to support Bellator, but like I don't want to be—I don't want to be paying Bellator like to watch their shit. But at the same time, like you're not—you're robbing that from the fighters at the same time, right? It's like if you're not supporting the company, you're not supporting the fighters that are making the company. So it's one of those really, really shit situations where I feel like they're—they're they're not a good company. I feel like the owner's a complete dick, to be honest. I mean, people talk shit about Dana. I think Dana's a saint, and like, I mean, I, I like Dana White. I don't have a problem with him. I feel like he's same here. Hundred thousand times the better uh, promoter than Bjorn, 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 Bjork, whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him. Man. Oh shit! Seriously, how do you say? It? Is it is it Bjorn, Bjorn, Bjorn? Just Bjorn. Like, Bjorn. Bjorn Rebney. Dana like, calls him Bjork, which is really yeah, funny. Yeah, you said the fucking dork. You fucking. <laughs> I mean, one of those stupidest things that we didn't really report on it, and I didn't even want to, because then it would have been promoting Bellator. That's how badly I didn't want to talk about this, but we'll talk about it. Bell uh, Bjorn Rebney once uh, was doing this interview where he was asked about the Culinary Union and and their and their um, involvement with the NSAC and the U like MMA in, in New York. In, in in New York, the New York thing especially, they were talking about it, and he actually. I don't know what the full quote was, um, but w what was the main thing? And I read the entire article, and what it stated was that you know um, that they have a problem for what the UFC does and what they stand for. So if if they have to, if they if they have something to stand by, then they should continue their feud with the UFC. And and to continue the feud with the UFC means to continue the ban in New York. And what kind of MMA promoter says that? Yeah, see that's that's when. Um that's just not good business. That's when you're looking at like a, a promoter to promoter beef instead of like a, a, what's good for the whole sport. It, it's just not. That's just not smart. I never even heard that interview. I never knew it existed. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Beast after up. this podcast, I'll definitely show you. Um, yeah, he needs to get slapped. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, well, you can have whatever problems you want with Dana. At the end of the day, that dude gets it done. That dude puts in the, the time. I'm sure Bjorn does too, but at the same time, he, he, he there, there's just an obvious set of different mindsets between these two guys. And Dana's, for me, uh, <laughs> for me, more so the the just the, the man I, I don't know I just can't put my finger on why it is Bjorn is so bad but the dude is just not treating his fighters well I don't uh, to a degree I feel like they pay them well Bellator especially because of the fact that with that tournament system you get a hundred thousand dollars at the end of a tournament which is a pretty good yeah, deal outside of the UFC the losers got like the losers probably yeah the losers probably don't get much but I mean that's kind of the system you're dealing with but um for outside of the UFC to make money like that you know uh, definitely helps. So I mean, like I like I say for to the fans, I think I want to you know, I, I definitely want to start putting out more Bellator uh, card related you know results and predictions and discussion things. Just strictly, and I, and I know some fans ask us sometimes, but we say it just because the the page doesn't generate enough you know views and stuff like that because of it. But I'm gonna try and press the issue here with the fans and try and you know. Uh, help promote mo just for the fighters because they need it. They do need it, and I and I they want it, and that's why they want to go to the UFC sometimes. But some of those guys truly believe in what Bellator is doing. Kudos to them for that. I just want <laughs> and, uh, and how about the uh, uh, not only did he did he um, copy the haircut, he's also got the black blazer in the back, black dress shirt, and he's just a dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. Zach, man. <laughs> That's our admin, Zach, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Boy, man. It. It's funny how people hate him so much. He's one of the funnier dudes amongst us all. Next to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Chris oh, is man. just funny looking. Yeah. Uh, um, but, anyway, back... Um, but uh, we all together, the point that I was trying to make is that, you know, Bellator has these fighters, these great fighters, these fighters that do great things and put on great moments... And and stars truly truly do come from this promotion. That much Bellator can can say that they do. They do do it. You know what I mean? I, I feel like they're they they're they're going through the motion of these generation of fighters that are coming up. Will Brooks could be that. He definitely could. And um, and I feel like that that he will be that if the if Bellator does the smart thing and gets behind this guy, and and you know starts putting putting on the the, the kind of fights that he deserves to have, and, and now that he's beaten Chandler, he's up in that level. You got to treat him like that, respect it, and promote him like that. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what I want to see from from that. And altogether, the Bellator card generated a lot of, especially with us. Um, a lot of a lot of topics such as the ones we've just talked about so I, I was altogether happy with it um, give me one second because I know that there's noise in the background let me get rid of it real quick uh, one second go ahead and uh, here's the first question that I, I will give you and while I'm giving it to you blaze I'm actually gonna grab something for the mic here that we're working on just so I can make the sound sound a little better and we'll see how it sounds. First question, we're going to do some fans questions by uh, you, the fans who have given us some questions uh, throughout the last two weeks that I've asked for and you've given us many so it's going to be fun. All right, you down? Yep. First one, and I like it. Nick Diaz versus Matt Brown. Basically the gist of the question. How do you think that fight goes? Just shoot on that match. Of the okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't think rankings-wise or any other sense it, it makes sense, but um, stylistically, if you put Matt Brown in there against Nick Diaz, that is a dogfight. Matt Brown brings it, he's always stepping forward, and then you have Nick Diaz always, you know, with his arms out saying, where are you at, why are you running away? Uh, Matt Brown is not the kind of fighter that, that's going to, you know, make that happen. Matt Brown's going to his face, Nick Diaz is going to be, um, you know, putting those jabs forward and together as combinations as he boxes so well. Um, as far as the prediction goes for that fight, I would I would feel like Matt Brown would win. I mean, it, it's a tough one again because Nick Diaz was a, a top five arguably fighter before he, he retired, but well, quote unquote retired. He's been inactive what a year and a half, maybe two years now. Uh, it'd be an interesting fight, but I feel like Matt Brown at this point he's he's probably at the peak of his career. I feel like it'd be a it would be a Matt Brown win, and I feel like Nick Diaz would he I don't know he would have no business being in there with Matt Brown at this point. That's just my opinion. I mean, you might have a differentiating uh, 
opinion on that matter. Yes, I do. And I think Nick Diaz takes it, and here's why. I think you, know, you look at the Matt Brown Eric Silva fight that happened a couple weeks ago. Um, Matt Brown, one of the better things he did, he actually looked very similar to a Diaz brother. I mean, he put on a just frantic pace, a pace that that a lot of people were dogging on 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 Silva's uh, cardio for, and I just think that's that's just silly because of the fact that not barely any high condition athletes could really honestly compete at that kind of a pace for for a long period of time, and it wasn't a long period of time. But man, that dude was putting the hurt on him at the same time. So I feel like. Uh, you know his cardio was put to the test, and Eric Silva still tried to hang in there, and, and he did very well. Uh, I felt uh, even in defeat. You know, and Nick Diaz may be one of the very few guys that can go out there and compete at that frantic pace that Matt was fighting at. I also, you know, believe Nick probably has, to a degree, the 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 better overall boxing, and I think he can outstrike Brown. But I mean, uh, you never know. Like you said, if Brown puts the right strike on Nick, it's definitely possible he can win. It's that's a closely matched fight. But um, I lean towards Nick because you probably put better combinations together. I mean, he does that to a degree better than anybody that, uh, especially anybody that Matt's faced yet. He he would attack the head and the body. He wouldn't just go for those one punch knockout power or shots. He never does. You know, he throws volume punches. Um, better than most out there, and and I and I think he's more sound, more accurate to a degree, more oh, uh, obviously he's more technical, especially. Yeah. Um. So I mean, and, and uh, you know, he, he is when you have a guy like Matt Brown who always pushes forward against a guy like Nick who always tries pushing forward and getting in your head and stuff like that. Man, it's just such a good fight altogether. That's a uh, um. If that fight were to ever happen, that would just be beautiful. That would that could that could headline a pay per view, honestly. If you wanted to make it like a number one contender fight, yeah. Like, cause there's not there there isn't many fights you can make in the UFC that headline pay per views, but that could be one of them. I'm sure that many people would not have a problem with. Mm, yeah, arguably. I mean, or a Fox card, I especially. Know, but, but. Like a on Fox card that special. Oh yeah, a Fox card. Sure, I'm not. I mean. It'd be a good co-main event for a pay-per-view card. I'm not sure if we could advise them for a main event of a, of a fifty-dollar card. Yeah, sometimes they have to do that. Sometimes there's moments where the UFC has to put on a fight that isn't a main event, and it's just more of like a uh, what's the word? I don't know, more of a spectacle kind of thing just to watch, knowing it's an yep. awesome fight. And that's one of them that that definitely could be. Like, uh, I'm sure everybody would, I mean, I'm sure it would do decent buys, especially. It's a good, it's a good kind of fight. Um, next question. What will happen with BJ's career if he happens to beat Frankie Edgar? That's a good Ooh. one. That's that a good a one. very good question. Yeah. Can I go? Go ahead. Did you say you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. Go just, ahead. um, basically, I want BJ's, his last fight was the loss against Nick Diaz. Am I, or no, it was Roy McDonald. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. Lost to Nick Diaz, then he came back and fought Rory. He got beat up both of those fights i mean no other way around that but again those are well welterweights he's now going to be at 145 i feel like if he beats edgar um but i don't think it's going to happen and i'll go into that afterwards if he beats edgar he's beating what i mean edgar's maybe top five in the featherweights right now right now I feel yeah like he, you know he wouldn't deserve an immediate title shot he wouldn't you know I, I would put him in the ranks of like where like a, a cup swanson or like a dennis siever or like even uh Ricardo Lamas at that point, like one of those guys. I feel like he needs at least two wins in the division. I don't care if he has a big name. Uh, he needs at least two wins in this division before he could be in that title talk. But, I mean, I don't see that happening because the weight cut, I think, is going to be too much for him. I don't think he's going to be – I think he's going to be tired. I don't think he's going to have the power he usually has. And, you know, kind of drifting off from the question, but I just don't think he's going to win, to be honest. And that sucks because I'm a huge BJ Penn fan. Well – for me, BJ stated earlier this year that if he does beat Edgar, you know, he'll make a run at the title. That's his words. So if he's true to it, and the UFC and him getting get the UFC should try should try getting him to work on that path. I don't. I wouldn't. You know, be surprised why they. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Um, what for me, honestly, like, it's hard to determine. Like honestly, what they would actually like honestly, what they would actually do if he did win that fight. Um, it could also be. Um, Dependent on you know how he wins, if he wins, if it's not like controversial at all. Um, right off the bat, yeah, I wouldn't want him to just get an immediate title shot. Um, but I, I would think, yeah, one more win. 
but at the same time, I wouldn't be exactly too opposed to him uh, going for for a title shot. But I don't think he will against Aldo, since they both just started training under Andre Pedneras, the head coach at Nova and Yao. Um, but man, that'd be insane if he became the first guy to challenge for like three straight or different UFC divisional belts. That'd be insane. That would be crazy. I mean. Florian fought at four weight classes, but he only fought for the belt at one fifty five and one forty five, right? Yeah. 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 So I mean, that that would that's crazy actually to think about, man. Yeah, fighting for a belt in three different weight classes, possibly being a champion, and I mean, that'd be. I mean, that would. I mean, that's crazy to think about realistically, man. I mean, I'm rooting for him. I hope BJ wins. I'm a big BJ. Fan. Well. <laughs> BJ Penn fan, um, and I hope that he uh, he pulls it out, but I don't see that happening. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> You're so stupid. You're so stupid, dude. All right. No, I just realized that that didn't sound so right oh, for a God. second. Only to you. I wouldn't. I would have thought. I would have. I would have totally let that slide and not thought about anything bad at all, but you had to take it there by laughing and just... No, I, 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 I didn't mean to. I was trying to hold it in. St- <laughs> BJ is the best. Yes. Next question by Adrian. That last question was brought to you, brought to us by... Let me see here. Uh, Byron Hudgens. So thanks for the question. Next one from... Um, from Adrian Sanchez, Henning Burrell versus D- Dominic Cruz, who wins? Another matchup, basically. Um, I'll go first, just because mine's kind of quick. I think he's. I think Burrell is just a much, much better, stronger striker. Dominic kind of utilizes like a mixed game of striking and wrestling, and so as a mixed martial artist, he's really good. But based on him being, based on. Uh, you know, Dominic being so versed in those styles, he could switch his game up. But against Barrow, I think he'd lose in the striking. And then uh, Hennon's all... I mean, overall, Dominic's a great mixed martial artist and mixed martial artist. Like, he's good everywhere. But I think Hennon's better everywhere than him at everything as far as the grappling. Maybe not wrestling. Um, uh, I, I feel like Hennon would be able to stoop his wrestling. Uh, and if it did go to the ground, he'd be able to, you know, hold his own at least, you know, get the better positioning, uh, land the good shots, att- attempt with good submissions. I think Cruz could probably defend very well. So, uh, I think, but I think if it was standing, Hennon would just tear his ass up. I think uh, Hennon beats beats him standing, and I think it would probably be like a, I mean, I'd go for like a third or fourth round stoppage or a decision. Yeah, uh, yeah. First of all, shout out to my boy Adrian Sanchez. I got that guy on Facebook. He's a cool dude. Uh, and a good question at that. So, um, Barrow and Dominic Cruz. Yeah, I feel like Barrow is a better uh, fighter in all aspects except for footwork. Uh, Dominic Cruz um, has that for him. But, I mean, footwork is not going to help you when you're getting punched in the face um, by a guy who's faster than you and, and <laughs> it's harder than you. So, I mean, it sounds funny, but... <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. I mean, he's got the good footwork, and normally it's good to, you know, he's elusive. Like, it's just browse too fast, I feel like. It. And especially if we're taking into account Cruz's layoff, <laughs> especially the two and a half years or whatnot, I don't see how uh, Cruz can be brow. But, I mean, even if even if it was a healthy, active, uh, still undefeated for whatever years Cruz, I would still be picking Brow because the matchup is just, it's just a horrible matchup for Cruz. Yeah. And I think the biggest difference is the striking. Cruz is not a power puncher. He's by no means a knockout artist. Uh, Hennon Burrell has shown that he can knock dudes out on the feet, put people down, and uh, and he's fast, if not just as fast as Cruz. Um, So I feel Burrell takes that just based on that. Uh, Next question, Trevor basically, Trevor Metropoulos, Metropoulos, Metropoulos? I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, Trevor. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Our, our admin Nick here is a dumbass. Uh, thanks for the question, buddy. Fucker. All right, anyway. <laughs> he basically straight up asks us, what is the greatest fight ever in our opinions? That's Ooh. a good one. Oh, shit. Good one. Oh, man. you got to put my thinking cap on. Best fight ever? you got to go back so many years of fighting. Man, it's crazy. Oh, man. I'm going to let you go first on that one, buddy. Give me a few seconds to think about it. Go for it. Uh, hmm. One of my, f- I, if if we're talking live, because I've been to quite a few UFCs, I would uh, say 
Brock Lesnar, watching live, Brock Lesnar and Cain Velasquez was one of the funnest fights I ever watched live, because I was there to watch that live. As far as what's the greatest fight I've ever seen, um, just ever, I would have to say um, Shogun and Hendo, the first one. Based on the fact that each round, I literally could not stop screaming. Each and every round. There was a moment in each round where I was just tripping out. Even in the last round when Shogun was, was coming back and trying to finish Hendo. I was like, you know, losing my mind because I was rooting for Hendo going into that. And then you see Shogun almost taking the entire fight back and maybe finishing it and maybe possibly... Getting, uh, you know, get, getting one of what would have been, in my opinion, if you finished it in that last round, probably the one of the biggest comebacks you'd have ever seen ever in your life. Um, but overall, it was an exciting ass fight. It was a close fight. It was, it was, it was amazing. It had its moments everywhere. And then their rematch was great as well. But as far as watching live, where I that I think about that come to mind, where I was just losing my absolute shit, watching probably uh, Mauricio Shogun Hua and Dan Henderson. You were there. Jose? Not for Shogun Hendo. Oh, okay. For, I was okay. there for uh, the um, the Brock Lesnar Cain Velasquez UFC 121 fight, which was in the uh, Honda Center in Anaheim. Okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. That fight was great. Also, one of my favorite fights from that event as well was also the Diego Sanchez Paulo Tiago fight. If anybody remembers that, that was a great yeah. fight as well. Um, and yeah. That was also the first time Jake Shields. That was the that was the event Jake Shields made his debut uh, in the UFC. Chris is jealous okay, right now. That that quote win. Yeah, that, Chris is jealous right now because I got to witness eyes on Jake Shields in competition. The striking god, in the yes. words of JBL. <laughs> yeah, oh, that event altogether was fun. But yeah, as far as events that I've seen live, that was and I've been to like four UFC events. And that one had the that one was my favorite fight that I'd seen live. What about you? Yeah. Uh, so for me, as far as I mean, there's a couple. I mean, as far as technical back and forth, like like a beautiful example of MMA, I would have to say the first Henderson and Shogun fight. As far as just like crazy, holy shit, what the fuck am I watching? Type of fights that are just back and forth. I would say Korean Zombie Leonard Garcia back in the WEC days. Oh, first, yeah, that's a good one. Their first fight, not not the one that ended in the Twister, but their first one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, WEC 48, 48, yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, Pride Days, you got Fedora, Crow Cup, Gomi, uh, Diaz, obviously, but I mean, as far and, and live, seeing live, I'm very lucky where I got to see Gustafson and Jones in Toronto live last September. Like, that I'm never going to forget, that, that to, to see that in person, Oh man, I had goosebumps for a week and a half. You and I mean, I got to go see that with Zach, and then I got to sleep over at Zach's house. And if you guys see what Zach looks like, he's he's a gorgeous male. I got to sleep on <laughs> And it was just a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you're saying that, and you're wearing a pink shirt, and then you're wondering why these fans aren't going to think you're gay. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because I have sex with beautiful women, but that's the topic for, for time. Oh, how dare you! <laughs> Thank you, Trevor Metropolis, for your question. It's not Metrop Metropolis. I'll say that right now because that's not a spell. Uh, thank you very much to the guy who Nick cannot pronounce. Yes, yes, question. especially because I can't pronounce your damn name. Sorry, dude. Um, next question comes from us from Tim Patrick. Uh, will Ben Henderson ever win a belt in the UFC again? I fucking hope not. <laughs> <laughs> God no, please no. <laughs> Do, no, I hope not. Doubtful. I mean, even even to be serious, uh, I, you know, I, I feel like he really needs to polish up certain aspects of his skill, other than his ability to. Defense. <laughs> submission defense. What? Well, actually, he he did have really good submission defense. He's always time, had. So. Yeah, he has probably like before that he had like this amazing streak of submission defenses percentage, like. Yeah, like he defended like thirty some def uh, submissions off, and it was like this crazy streak that he was on as as a UFC fighter to have defended against so many submissions, and then he gets caught against Pettis, and so uh, you know I don't think that's something he needs to really work on. I think it's already a very polished skill uh, defensively. Yeah, um, one of one of the things that Benson really needs to do is to is to sharpen his striking for one, because I don't feel his striking has ever gotten him anywhere except for maybe in the Nate Diaz fight. Um, and then, uh, and then as far as his, his, uh, his wrestling, he, he needs to realize that he, he, he can't just, you know, s s 
basically steal some of these fights. A lot of people think that he, like, uh, I think he needs to just be more aggressive as well. One of the main things about that, he needs to be more aggressive. I feel like if he was more aggressive and also at the same time technical like he most of the time is, he would probably finish some fights or at least have, you know, definitely sway people more into thinking he won certain fights. I don't think he won that Josh Thompson fight. I really don't. Um, but, yeah, I thought Josh Thompson won that fight, but the Fox headliner, yeah, and that pissed me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Gilbert fight, I thought he lost that one too. The second Frankie Edgar fight, uh, very close. So I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna bring that one into it. But, uh, sure. um, but yeah, <laughs> it, he the could. The second Frankie Edgar fight, that's funny. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, just speaking on that because the second that was at UFC 150, there was me, Zach, and, and Gary when the other admins came down. Oh, that's Canada. right. Yeah. So me, me, Zach, Gary, and uh, at Leash, we uh. We all went to a restaurant called Boston Pizza to watch the fights, and Gary's a huge Frankie Edgar fan, and uh, he started like cheering up when he lost. And I have a still to this day, I have a picture on my phone somewhere of him like pouting in the corner at the bar. It's just uh, poor, poor Gary. We love you, buddy. <laughs> hilarious. That's what you get for being a fucking Frankie Edgar fan, though. <laughs> you hater. <laughs> But yeah, I, I mean, will he compete for one? I don't know. Maybe if Gilbert wins, and then uh, you know, Ben Benson wins. If Gilbert wins, and Benson wins this fight against uh, who's he I fighting? Have Cal- Khabib, Kabal- Kabalabalab, or whatever his name is, beating uh, Henderson. Yeah, fuck's his name. Kabalab is it? Kabalab or Kabalab? Rustam Kabilab. There you go. Kabilab. I know it's Rustam. I just don't know the last name is like fucking Balking for Ab- like, Bob. What? Bob. Bob. Rustam Kabilab. Get that shit right. <laughs> See, now you're fucking up names. Give me shit. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, if Gilbert wins, I think the best scenario for Benson is if he wins his upcoming fight, maybe he wins one more since that fight isn't happening until December. Maybe he wins one more after that and Gilbert wins. I, I could see them making that rematch. Uh, that's probably his best shot right now. Do you um, think Gilbert beats Pettis? I, I think he could. Um, I think I, I back Pettis into that fight, but it's definitely possible Gilbert could win that. See, I, I, I'm liking this fight because for a very long time, lightweight was like ruled by people that I just really didn't like. Like I wasn't a Frankie Edgar fan. I was not a Gray Maynard fan. I was I, like those two guys were just back and forth, and I was like, either way, whoever wins this fight, I'm not going to be happy. But now it's like two guys that I actually really enjoy watching fight, and I really enjoy, um, you know, their personalities. And, and oh, their Pettis, was- Pettis and Gilbert. Yeah, I love both those guys. So, I mean, um, to, I don't want to see Pettis lose, but, I mean, Gilbert's a tough dude. I mean, the way that he lost his fight against Bendo, I mean, I would talk to see him lose another fight like that, but it's going to be an exciting fight, and I just hope, I pray to God, you know, knock on wood, but uh, I hope that fight, it's far away, so I hope nobody, you know, gets injured. Yeah, exactly. And they got to go through the whole tough thing, the ultimate fighter. They'll be the coaches for the uh, the, the strawweight women's division that will be introduced to the to the UFC and to fans everywhere uh, come the fall sometime. Um, so thanks, Tim Patrick, for that question. Good question. <laughs> you kind of got my haterade out. Um, <laughs> let's see what the next question is here. Well, I'm skipping some because, sorry fans, but some of you asked me some silly ones. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what? Shots fired! Shots fired! It's... Yo, you know the people that ask the questions and hear this are gonna be like, he, he didn't ask my question. He's talking about me. <laughs> yep, exactly. If if I didn't ask your question, it's either because, not nah, just suck. Yeah, not just that reason. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I answered. Sorry. I answered these questions back to him, but I'm replaying them here for the podcast just so everybody can hear them. You know what I mean? Um. John Paul McKenna asks us, uh, was Silva's cardio the reason he couldn't have a better showing against Brown? Did he gas out trying too hard to sub Brown? It's a good question. Uh, One of the things that, for me, that he didn't fight smart in that fight. He never mixed, Eric Silva I'm talking about, he never really mixed it up. He, He kept head hunting because he knew he was hurt, he was in trouble, he never tried slowing it down, he never tried, you know, slowing down the pace and and the and the uh, aggression that Matt was bringing, you know, he never mixed his shots in to attack the body. He exposed a very uh, a, a weakness very early on by attacking that body. He almost finished him because of it. But then you also have to factor in that that fucking scary ass pace that Matt was operating at. I mean, he kept moving forward, kept attacking at a pace that you know I would say you know ninety percent of fighters would probably slow it down before going that hard. 
but you know Matt never let up, and Eric was not really prepared to, de to deal with it, nor did he react correctly. A decent wrestler would have been able to stun that kind of game plan that Matt came in with, but Eric preferred to stand the entire time and, and, and headhunt, and that's what happened. You know, Every now and again, he'd hit the body, and the majority of the time he did that, he'd hurt him. Like He'd noticeably you know, stun Brown with those shots. So um, I, I, I don't think it was his cardio. I mean, I think a lot of fighters' cardio would have gone out in a, in a fight that frantic and crazy. So I don't blame Silva's, Silva's cardio. I blame his, 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 his uh, game plan in the fight, during the fight. Yeah, no, I wouldn't even necessarily say cardio. I would just say, like, what you were saying. I, 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 the first one to the body, was it with a kick or was it a punch? The first it was a time kick. Were... The first time he dropped Brown, yeah, it was a kick. He got a kick, then he got on top of him, and he got his back, and he got him in that choke. And I think, yeah, he did, he, he exerted himself too much. He held on way too long when it was clear after a certain point he wasn't going to get it. I mean, Matt Brown's a tough dude. He's not going to tap out to a neck crank. You might get some other guys to tap out to that, but Matt Brown's not going to tap out to a neck crank. It's not going to happen. He kept, he kept, you know, exerting energy. And every he, he did connect a few good other times throughout the, the fight to the body. And every single time, Matt Brown, Winston Painter, he covered up, and Eric Silva just didn't capitalize on it. He was yeah. kept headhunting or he backed up and that's probably because he was tired from the previous run he didn't have the energy to you know follow up with that but uh, i think it boils down to him not fighting first in this or not fighting smart in the first round and uh didn't have the energy to you know to do what he wanted to do when he, he could have finished the fight because matt brown was was hurt man he was he was out of it for a little bit in the first round there mm -hmm. he's a tough guy yeah i'm yeah, that's my answer to that question. I'm, I hope I answered it properly there, buddy. <laughs> hey, what the hell was that for? What's, nothing. That was a good answer. I'm just, that's a good way. Uh, I, I told you I have a Peter Griffin laugh. You yeah, you. Hey, holy crap. <laughs> well, we'll go on from the questions from there. If you have the time, let me know, just in case you yeah. want. Um, hey, you Peter, stop it, Peter. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Really? Really, dude? Really? <laughs> How dare you? Anyway, let's talk about this weekend's fight card. We'll, we'll have some more questions the next time we have you on, especially let's talk about this weekend's fight card before we wrap this bitch up. Um, UFC 173? Yes? 173. Morale versus TJ Dillashaw. God, man. that's crazy how fucking fast... Uh, these four years, of just, or these last five years, have just seemed to have flying by with all these pay-per-views that have gone on. We're already in the 70s, so close to like the 200s, it feels. That'd be crazy. But yeah. one, yeah, UFC 173 going down this weekend. Hen and Burrell headlining against TJ Dillashaw. I'm excited for this fight. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, I'm actually super, super pumped. This is another night, like, uh, it just seems, people are complaining about, like, so many cars that they're, you know, oversaturated and they're not good. I mean, there's so many quality cars like this that are getting put out, and I don't understand where this, you know... You got Dan Henderson versus Daniel yeah. Cormier. Shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, I mean, like, if you go... I mean, you got... On the on the fight pass prelims, like, guys like Anthony Nijikwani, you got Sam Cecilia. I, I mean, that's just on the fight pass. And, like, on Fox Sports 1, I'm looking here, you got, like, Tony Ferguson, the, the tough winner. He's coming back against Kikuno. You've got Alec Quinta against Mitch Clark. Uh, Michael Chiesa, and then you got the pay-per-view, obviously, Jamie Varner and James Krause, those are two killers, uh, Mizugaki and Rivera, Mizugaki's sick, man, I've been a huge fan of him ever since that, that Taurus fight way back in the WEC days, like, the early days. Oh, fuck, I totally forgot Robbie Lawler and Jake Ellenberger was on this card, yeah, go fuck Robbie yourselves if you don't want to see this card with that fight on there. That is crazy. Yeah, go fuck yourselves if you don't want to watch this fight card with that fight on there. Are you kidding me? That fight is reason alone to go watch this card. Yeah, it was going to be Ellenberger versus Safadine finally, and then Safadine got injured again. Oh, uh, yeah. This, I'm glad he got hurt. I'm sorry, Safadine, but yeah, he needed to be hurt. That's this needs to happen. happen. No personal feeling, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Zappadine as a fighter. He's a good fighter, but man, I'm so glad that Robbie, you know, coming coming off like a quick turnaround from that from that title fight with Johnny Hendricks, um, I'm surprised he won. Yeah, it's such a yeah. It's surprising that he would come so quickly off a fight like that, and that just shows you that dude loves the fucking brawl because the fact that he would come so quickly, a quick turnaround like that. When I'm sure he got paid for at that at that event. I mean, you don't get to be on the head. He Money. I think they got fight of the night on that card. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, so yeah, it. exactly. I mean, the dude made money on that fight card and still wishes to come back and, and, and compete and maybe get another shot at that belt. And, you know, the, the 
quick turnarounds like these and getting the wins and getting the knockouts, getting the finishes, that does it. And if Robbie does that, this fight card, everybody's going to be talking about how this dude needs to work his way or get his or, or back to the title fast and, or get, already get it. And people are going to talk about that because Robbie Lawler is a fucking animal. He's a fucking, that what? dude is a man. That is the manliest fucking man that you've ever seen as far as he's so, so going in there. The uh, Militant's fighting system, those guys, man, they're they're crazy. And I'm going to forever be a uh, Lawler fan just because of what he did to fucking Josh Kosh. Like that Fraggle Rock fucking <laughs> whatever, man. That was just beautiful. That is what I wanted to – that's what I wanted Paul Daly to do to Josh Kosh like way back in the day before the bell. I mean <laughs> – Before geez. the goddamn bell, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said – this is definitely a fight card to watch. It's a great card. You can't tell me that this card is not lacking the star power. You got Takeya Mizugaki, Varner, Lawler, Ellenberger, Cormier, Henderson, Burrell, Dillashaw. Dillashaw is getting, uh, getting his due at this point because since coming off the Ultimate Fighter, he's he's been an animal. He's finished uh, most of his fights. The fight that he did lose um, to, to, uh, to what the fuck's his name? Shit. That guy who's injured, um, what's his name? Uh... This, oh man, that's sad because he can't remember his name. But that just proves oh, uh, the point. Oh, Asuncio, Rafael. Yeah, Asuncio. Rafael Asuncio. That's sad because it makes us remember. Just just reminds us why he probably shouldn't have been the headliner of this card. I felt oh, he, no. I felt yeah. he won that fight. Did you? Yeah, no, I think he won that fight too. I mean, realistically, I'm gonna look at his record really quickly. I mean, besides that one loss, which I think was a win. He has wins, uh, really good wins. Uh, if, it, if my phone's gonna stop being a dink here, uh, yeah, he beat Mike Mike Easton. He beat Hugo Vienna, which is the guy from the Ultimate Fighter. I say Tamora Von Lee. Von Lee's sick. I mean, um, and I mean, and what's and what's great about this is that the majority of those fights he fucking finished those guys. Now he didn't finish Easton, and he didn't finish this uh, that that one tall guy that he that he fought. Wal 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 Watson or something. Yeah, Wal Watson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean the the fights that he did finish, and 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 that just shows you how how improved he is. Whether you want to attribute that to Dwayne Lovewin or not, go ahead. But he's improved. He's already been a great wrestler, and he showed uh, in in his in in his last year and a half run here that he's improved so well. Will that be enough for Henan Burrell? Fuck, who knows? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> but that's still a great fight. I'm a huge TJ Dillashaw fan. Chris isn't. He likes to talk shit. But I fucking love watching TJ go to work. The dude, especially in his last fight. If you watch his last fight against Mike Easton, dude tore it up. He was kicking when Easton thought he punched and taking him down when he thought he wanted to strike. He was doing everything unpredictable. He was throwing shit you'd never seen him throw before and being effective with it. And he was just basically beating Easton's ass up. He had no answer for what was going on. So I felt like TJ, that was one of his shi the shining moments in the cage right there because he beat a tough, tough dude and he made it look easy because he, 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 he used the best of his ability in there. And uh, and I feel like if that T.J. Dillashaw comes and fights Burrell with just a little hint of 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 of, uh, of more aggression, I think he he brings it to Burrell. And Burrell's in a fight here. Um, if that's enough to dethrone him, we'll see. That's the big question, and that's why I'm excited for this weekend's fight. I I can't wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm also a big no. Sorry, I I didn't think you were gonna finish your sentence that quickly. I was. Um, drifting away in your beautiful voice there but yeah i would agree with you as far as i'm a big tj fan i feel like he gets a lot of hate um he doesn't deserve it you know he got knocked out by dawson at the finale but since that time he's been on a roll um i still feel like in this fight it'd be cool to see him win but i mean realistically speaking he's fighting Ren and who that, who, who that, arguably is number one or two in the pound for pound rankings he's right there with john jones dana white says he's right there with john jones and i don't disagree with that whatsoever because he really is he's on this terror here he's on this fucking psychopathic streak of his where he's just beating everybody and making it look easy i mean he's he rarely ever has these moments where he looks weak um and he's just he's just so so technical in there as well as being probably one of the more savage fighters you've seen because when that dude hurts you he goes after it and shit he you know really I mean? does yeah mm -hmm. i mean you've seen you saw it live the fight with uh eddie wineland i mean that dude just pounces oh, on you man that, I, i'm never gonna live that down dude because i i looked down at my phone for three seconds and i missed that spinning kick live like, ah ha 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 I, I I hear everyone going, oh, and like I all I saw was like the follow up punches and then the ah! big 
I missed the actual kick live, and I was at the event, man. Like, oh. I, I didn't check my phone the entire fucking card. I just happened like it was like the beginning of the second round. Like, I'm just gonna check my phone really quick because I thought it vibrated, and then all, all there's just crowd goes fucking nuts. And I'm just like, what uh. the? F I, oh, I almost threw my phone up into the air, man. <laughs> Sucks to be you, dude. That's funny though. But yeah, I mean, like I said, if 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 you don't think this card has star power, you're fucking kidding yourselves. I mean, yep. that's just since this. I can't fucking wait. This is an awesome card, um, and it's gonna be. I think the prelims are badass. I think the main card is even more badass. Definitely yep. will be watching the fight pass cards because I'm a big Anthony and Jaquani fan. I feel like he he's fighting Vince from Hell Pachel, and I think he's probably gonna kick his ass. So I always like yep. watching and Jaquani work. Um, He's a great Muay Thai kickboxer, man. Like the, the his his striking is, it's underrated. I mean, the reason why because he always gets fucking taken out in wrestling. But I mean, if you just let him stand and bang with the guy, it, it's a beautiful display of just pure striking. It, it's great. I I love watching him fight too. Yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up here. Put it down. Oh, yeah, don't be silly, rap. You're Willie. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, we'll wrap it up here, Fight Fans. Uh, any comments, Big questions? Podcast. Say that again? I just ruined a great podcast with that yeah. last comment. <laughs> Motherfucker you, yeah. Well, I think it was a great one. I think we had some uh, great points to make as far as for Bellator. Um, uh, Fight Fans, do you have any questions for us, comments, concerns? Let us know. Let us know what we could be doing different. Um, definitely hoping to have uh, former UFC bantamweight uh, fighter Rosie Sexton on the show as we recently had UFC, uh, former UFC flyweight uh, Ulysses Gomez on the on, on the podcast. Definitely want to make it a point to try and get some fighters on here. It's awesome doing it. They're, they have, they're, they're so chill to talk to and it's good getting them in that setting. And uh, Blaze, thanks for coming on, bro. I had a fun time. Hey, no problem, buddy. Anytime, you know. I'm always here, and I love mixed martial arts. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm. I've had a few beers. It's a, it's a Tuesday. You've had, night. You're not. Yeah, you're you you're doing that. You're you're flirting with me. You have pink shirt on. You need to knock this shit off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fuck off. Just... <laughs> all right, five fans. We love you. Give us some feedback. Give Blaze some love because he wants it. All right, boys. I'll talk to you later, brother. Have a good night, buddy.